Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 10th of December. Protests erupt across northeastern India over citizenship amendment bill. MQM condemns crackdown against Muhajirs by Pakistani armed forces. An Afghan President Ghani calls for regional international support for peace. And now for all the details. Dozens of protests broke out across the northeastern India on Tuesday after the lower house of the Indian Parliament passed the contentious Citizenship Amendment Bill late Monday night. The bill seeks to provide Indian citizenship to non-Muslim minorities from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan. Protests against Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019 intensified in several parts of northeastern India on Tuesday, a day after it was passed in the lower house of the parliament. The protesters came out on streets sloganeering against the bill in various cities. Markets in several cities across Assam province wore a deserted look as the region observed a shutdown as a mark of protest against the bill. Several organizations, including student unions, also called for the 12-hour shutdown. Lok Sabha, the lower house of the parliament, passed the Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019 after over seven hours of heated debate on Monday. The bill seeks to provide Indian citizenship to Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, Christians, Jains and Parsis. It leaves out Muslims who entered the country from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan until December 31, 2014. Protesters fear that it will primarily benefit the illegal Bengali Hindu migrants from Bangladesh who have settled in large numbers across the region. We are opposing this bill because this bill is unconstitutional, it is communal, it is against the interest of indigenous people of Assam and Northeast India as a whole and it will violate the Assam Accord which is an emotion of the people of Assam. Protesters in neighbouring Tripura province said that they have become a minority in their homeland because of the heavy influx of illegal immigrants from Bangladesh. Meanwhile, security has been beefed up across the provinces of Northeast over the protest against the bill. A civilian was injured in a ceasefire violation by Pakistan along the border in India's Jammu and Kashmir on Monday night. Pakistan has been regularly targeting forward Indian posts and civilian areas for months now. Pakistani troops continue to target civilian areas along the line of control or LOC in Punch district of India's Jammu and Kashmir, resulting in injuries to a civilian on Monday night. Local residents said there was intense firing and heavy shelling from the Pakistan side overnight, which even damaged their houses in Shahpur sector of Poonj. According to the Indian government, there have been 950 incidents of ceasefire violations by Pakistan along the LOC in Jammu and Kashmir from August to October. So, my place is here. 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 पूरा छन्नी हो गए हो भी उनकी भी तबाही हो चुकी है तो इस लड़के के भी गोला गोला उधर लगा तो उधर जाके इसके टांग के ऊपर लग गया Earlier this month a woman and a boy were killed and nine civilians were injured in Pakistani firing in Poonch district Indian security officials blame that Pakistan attempts to push a number of infiltrators during ceasefire violations In is from Pakistan a Pakistani court on Monday asked the government to make a final decision about removing the name of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Vice President Maryam Nawaz from the exit control list within the next seven days. This comes after Maryam Nawaz filed a petition seeking removal of her name from the no-fly list to visit her ailing father, former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif in London. 
A Pakistani court on Monday directed the government to decide over the removal of Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Vice President Maryam Nawaz's name from the exit control list within seven days. Maryam, daughter of Pakistan's former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, was placed on the exit control list or no-fly list in August last year in a sugar mills corruption case. She had filed a petition in the Lahore High Court last week seeking the removal of her name from the list so she could visit her ailing father in London, local media reported. In her petition, Maryam Nawaz stated that she wished to go to abroad for six weeks. Before obtaining bail last month, Maryam had been in custody following an investigation into the corruption case. The National Accountability Bureau had arrested her on August 8th. Moving on. Mutahida Qaumi movement, the mainstream political party of Muhajirs, has strongly condemned Monday's crackdown by Pakistani armed forces against the community. Several Muhajirs were baton charged and arrested for trying to pay tributes at a Muhajir Martyrs monument in Karachi. The mainstream political party of Muhajirs, Mutahida Qaumi movement or MQM chief Altaf Hussain has slammed Pakistan's armed forces for unleashing terror and brutal repression on Mohajis in a crackdown against the community in Karachi city. Pakistani security forces on Monday battened, charged and arrested several people, including women and the elderly, for trying to pay tributes and recite Qurani verses at the Mohajir Martyrs Monument in Azizabad area in Karachi. The Mohajir community wanted to pay homage to the brave hearts who laid down their lives in the struggle of retrieving their usurped rights. Since 2016, Pakistan's military establishment has barricaded the monument. The Mohajirs say that it has been well over 70 years, but their community of Urdu-speaking immigrants who left India during partition in 1947 and settled in Pakistan have still not been accepted worthy of equal rights. They have long claimed to have been suffering discrimination and even human rights violations at the hands of a nation which they say does not accept them as their own. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Monday said that people of his country are optimistic about their future as he called for an Afghan-led and Afghan-owned peace process to succeed. Addressing the 8th Ministerial Conference of the Heart of Asia Istanbul process in Turkey, Ghani called for regional and international support for Afghan peace. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani on Monday addressed the 8th Ministerial Conference of the Heart of Asia Istanbul process in Turkey. Ghani emphasized the need for a political solution to the conflict in Afghanistan and stressed the need for an international and regional consensus for peace. He said that people of his country are optimistic about their future as he called for an Afghan-led and Afghan-owned peace process to succeed. The Afghan president said the main goal is to put an end to 40 years of violence by ensuring that not only the conflict ends but to secure guarantees for its non-repetition. A political solution through an enduring peace process is an imperative but so is agreed upon mechanisms for dealing with the threats of terrorism and criminality and narcotics. We can, however, credibly say, with the leadership, organization, equipment, patriotic fervor, and commitment of our defense and security forces, that we will be able to sustain our gains and that the military is now secure in one of the most highly respected state institutions in our country. I thank Meanwhile, I peace talks between the United States and the Taliban resumed and are currently underway in Qatar, three months after President Donald Trump abruptly halted diplomatic efforts that could end the U.S.'s longest war. Reports suggest that the two sides will discuss a reduction of violence, a ceasefire and an intra-Afghan negotiation in order to reach agreement on a peace deal. Single moms in southern Sri Lanka are breaking cultural and gender barriers as they have turned into taxi drivers. Pink tuk-tuk taxis are being driven by single mums who only take fares from women and children. Single moms in Sri Lanka's southern province are breaking cultural and gender barriers as they have turned into taxi drivers. These bright pink tuk-tuk taxis are no ordinary taxis. 
as they are driven by single moms who only take fares from women and children. This campaign called Think Pink is a charity project to beat gender-based poverty run by Rosie May Foundation, a British charity. The project provides a sustainable living for poverty striking women who have been left without a husband. With no income and no job, some consider giving up their children and send them to orphanages. But the project provides a way out of the poverty trap. <laughs> The project also has a savings scheme to help the women pay their bills and plan for the future. In a country where over 90% of the women have suffered sexual harassment on public transport, according to the United Nations Population Fund, these drivers are popular because the mothers know their children will be delivered safely. An exhibition of Chinese and Indian paintings and calligraphy was held at the Embassy of China in India's capital New Delhi on Monday. The exhibition was a warm-up event for the celebrations of the 70th anniversary of China-India diplomatic ties to be marked next year. A joint exhibition of Chinese and Indian paintings and calligraphy was held on Monday at the Chinese Embassy in New Delhi as a warm-up event for the celebrations of the 70th anniversary of the establishment of China-India diplomatic ties. Titled Share the Beauty, Achieve the Harmony, the exhibition was attended by a host of foreign dignitaries and artists from both China and India. Bao Jicheng, wife of Chinese ambassador to India, Su Widong, said that efforts were jointly made by as many as 10 artists from both the neighboring countries to elaborately produce 70 works of art of traditional style. So as we all know that China and India are both ancient civilizations. Chinese people always appreciate Indian culture. The leaders of our two countries, President Xi Jinping and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, reached a consensus to promote people-to-people -people exchanges. The exhibition aimed to promote the understanding of arts and culture of both China and India and to increase people-to-people -people exchanges to further strengthen bilateral ties. Authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir have started preparing the famous tulip garden in Srinagar city ahead of its annual opening. The process of sowing flower bulbs is in full swing in the garden which displays a variety of flowers including tulips, which are the major highlight. The process of sowing flower bulbs is in full swing at the famous tulip garden in Srinagar city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir. Local authorities can be seen all get up with the preparations of one of the largest gardens in Asia that opens every year at the beginning of spring season. According to workers at the garden, the design of the garden and the pattern of sowing the bulbs have been changed to make the garden more attractive for visitors this year. Din raat kam chal raha tha yahan pe ki humne naya kuch aage inshallah next season mein jo show bahar se log aayenge country se bahar bhi aayenge aur country se aayenge puri Hindustan se yahan aane ke liye ek saath jut ke yahan pe aake takriban to 2 3 lakh aane wale inshallah ummeed hai is saal to log bahut zyada yahan aayenge isliye humne thoda sa ya change kiya tha gate ke aage aur piche aur daaye baaye humne thoda sa naya design nikala tha to hamara jo pehle hamara schedule tha humne second week of november rakha tha sewing ke liye तो लेकिन अनफॉर्चुनेटली अनटाइमली हेवी स्नोफॉल हो गया उसकी वजह से हमारी सोइंग डिले हो गई तो लेकिन अब स्नो मेल्ट हो गया है और मौसम मौसम खुशबूदार होने लगा है तो वी आर ऑन द जॉब स्प्रेड ओवर 30 एकर्स द ट्यूलिप गार्डन इज बिल्ट ऑन अ माउंटेन स्लोप द फ्लावर फील्ड हैज सेवन टेरेसेस ईच विद डिफरेंट वैरायटीज ऑफ फ्लावर्स स्पेशली ट्यूलिप्स विद मोर देन 46 वैरायटीज एंड 15 लाख ट्यूलिप्स New flowers are added each year in the garden. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsLine.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsLine and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsLine. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.